This is part one for the Persian Wars. In this uh, presentation, we're going to discuss the first Persian War uh, between the uh, various Greek poli and, of course, the Empire of Persia. I have a quote here to start. So it stands now a man who declares that the Athenians were the saviors of Greece would hit the very truth. Of course, this is Herodotus. Guess where he's from? He's from Athens. An overriding question for this presentation with the first Persian War, and something to keep making notes of when you move along in this presentation. Why were the Athenians successful against Darius? Uh, Darius, this, this great um, administrator of this vast Persian Empire stretching from the Indus River Valley all the way through Southwest Asia, conquering Egypt, uh, Jordan River Valley, Mesopotamia along the way, and actually has a foothold in northern Greece. Uh, has control of some of the areas of northern Greece, uh, the Macedonian kings, for example. How are they able to subdue or at least stave off this Persian invasion. With all the resources that are within this Persian Empire that Darius has at his exposure, um, it's going to be uh, some maneuvering by the Athenians uh, in order to do this. Before we go any further talking about the ins and outs of this uh, First Persian War, particularly the Battle of Marathon, uh, remember who the Persians are. You have Cyrus the Great, who is really the, the founder, the uniter of this region, uh, annexing territory all throughout Southwest Asia. You have, of course, Cambyses, who rules after Cyrus, uh, who annexes Egypt as well. And then you have Darius. Remember, centralized authority, the royal road network, um, the satraps, the local uh, governors and administrators of this empire, in order to link everybody together. Remember, it was not an oppressive regime. It was not somebody, or excuse me, it was not an empire that was going to come in, move in, take over, and tell you exactly what you wanted to do or what religion you were supposed to be. There, you, these areas remained a certain amount of autonomy. They just had to pay a an affordable tax and um, offer military support when needed. Before we discuss the Ionian Revolt, which really kickstarts this First Persian War, it's important to note that in Darius's mind, Athens, uh, this great city-state of Greece, was actually supposedly part of the Persian Empire at the start of this. Uh, Athenian, <coughs> Athenian ambassadors had gone to the Persian Empire and the Persians had asked them for uh, land and water as this sort of symbolic gesture that you are now part of the empire, which the Athenians at the time obliged him. Now when they returned and told the council, you know, what was going on, the Cleisthenes Council 500 is the time frame that we're talking about here, uh, they rejected it they didn't have the common courtesy to tell the Persians that they had rejected it. So Persia, at the time of this Ionian revolt, is under the impression that it's not just the Ionians that are revolting, but it is also the Athenians. Athenians didn't see it that way. It was coming from two different perspectives. But what we do know, and what was common knowledge amongst people at the time, was that um, in Asia Minor, these Greeks, particularly on the west coast, you can see Ionia right there, was part of one of Darius's satraps. Now, uh, there is a rebellion. The Ionians ask Athenians for naval support, which the Athenians oblige. Now, ultimately, the Ionian revolt is put down, uh, but Darius does not forget the fact that, in his eyes, one of his own areas rebelled against him. And he is going to vow vengeance. He is going to want to basically take down Athens as a whole. We have an interesting quote here uh, from Herodotus, uh, the father of Greek history, as he writes about the Persian Wars, uh, basically marking this idea of revenge that Darius has. Not necessarily to annex territory, not for uh, sheer political or economic gain or anything like that, uh, but he is looking to punish this area, and that's ultimately what he is going to attempt. As you can see, he has a foothold in the north of Greece, and he thinks that this area of Athens should be his. So he's going to attack. Now, modern estimations of the size of the Persian expedition are around 20,000 troops. Uh, an exact number we don't know. There are differing accounts on this, but it was a rather large force, um, at least for this time period. Now, as this battle is going on, um, he attempts to sort of uh, mediate within Athens. Some 
try to come up with some sort of solution uh, to this problem. However, in September 490, we have the Battle of Marathon, one of the most important battles in the development of Western civilization, uh, taking place near Attica. It is renamed Marathon for the fact that after the Athenians win at the Battle of Marathon, they send a runner um, 26.2 miles to go to Athens, and as soon as he gets to Athens, he yells, Nika! And then he collapses uh, after he yells this idea of victory. Uh, casualties for this war estimated about 6,400 Persians to only 192 Athenians. Now the source here is, once again, Herodotus, and he's going to be biased. Uh, but all in all, it was a one-sided affair, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, you have this large empire, and a superior fighting force, and you have this tiny little Greek city-state, Athens, which had not entered into its golden age yet. It's going to happen after the Persian Wars. And yet they're still able to have this one-sided victory. Uh, basically what happens, and it ultimately brings down um, the fall of this Persian force, is they have to go on land and they have to fight it on the Greeks' terms. Uh, the Greeks are able, particularly the Athenians, are able to um, choose where they're going to fight this thing wisely. They have Athens to the south. Um, as you can see there, they have the marshes to the north. There's really only one direction in which they're going to head. Now, when they head in this direction, the Greeks purposefully, and they're instructed to do this, give way towards the center. Uh, they are in a steady retreat, and the flanks are closing in. And they, and they funnel them into this very narrow bottleneck sort of area within the terrain where you have hills on both sides. Once that happens, they're able to basically surround the Greeks on at least three of their sides. And then once they have their forces concentrated, once they, they stop uh, giving way in the middle, they start to drive them back to the sea. There's literally accounts of Athenians chasing Persians, stabbing them in the backs as they're trying to climb back onto their ships. It was just a disaster for Darius's forces. Uh, definitely not what he was was hoping to happen. Now, ultimately, the Battle of Marathon pretty much encompasses um, the, this first Persian War. Uh, Darius is defeated. You have the greatest. Um, land empire that the world had seen up to this point with the Persians, and they're defeated by not necessarily the Greeks, but just the Athenians. Um, now there were some forces that were from outside of Athens as well, uh, but Greece is not a united region, even during this first Persian war. Uh, you have the Spartan Confederacy, which is completely against the Greeks. Uh, you have Cleisthenes, who has founded his Democratia, his Council of 500, this idea of, of more of a direct democracy. And you have Spartans and their confederacy who are completely opposed to it, who want to support uh, the rule of oligarchy. So the First Persian War does not even unite this area of Greece, uh, despite the fact that, that it was a victory. What we're ultimately going to see is if you go back to those four common themes that we talked about before, um, the language and literature, the mythology, uh, the Olympics, and of course the outside enemy. This outside enemy of Persia is going to become very important during the Second Persian War, um, in which Darius's son, Xerxes, uh, vows vengeance for what happened predominantly at the Battle of Marathon. So, we'll pick it up with the uh, Second Persian War in the other video. Thanks for listening. See you soon.